Welcome to Mix It Up Monday. We are going to do something that I think is pretty fun today. I'm going to show you a sort of a winter. It's actually not sort of. It's a winter background. And I'm going to start by just putting some paint right on my canvas. I'm going to also add some here to my palette. And... We're just going to use a little bit of this darker color. I'm excited to share this because our newest design in the Design of the Month Club is a um, tree. And I want, I like to present a few background options. So I'm going to actually make this. Um, almost like a wood grain on the background. I've actually created this background before for a tree and a cardinal little paint party. And I'm actually upcycling a paint party canvas. But I'm just going to kind of create sort of a, I don't know if you would say sort of a northern lights feel for the sky kind of, and we're going to, you know, completely transform the foreground. So if you, if you don't like this grain for your background, you can just do like a sky up here at the top, and then you could start the trees that I'm going to do next, but I'm going to just go wet on wet. And I'm not worried too much about so I'm kind of looking at this area here to see if it's, you know, kind of what I want because I'm going to be covering most of the foreground. And this background would be great for um, some of our designs that are in our holiday minis creative bundle. It would be great for the Oh Dear canvas or even the Nomi. We could put a Nomi in the trees. We could do the camper. Um, the possibilities are just endless. So I'm going to do this with a couple of different size brushes. I have a few. So I have a little tip for you, but I'm going to start by getting some of my both colors of my paint on my brush. And this brush is already pretty loaded with paint, actually, but I'm going to keep it light. And yes, you see other colors on the back of on my palette. I let paint dry and build up and then I peel it off. That's how I roll. <laughs> but um, so I'm just going to start forming a tree line and I'm just going to let my brush make the skinny little snowy trees and I'm going to keep them all skinny but you could vary them you could make them you know super uniform and all the same height if you if you like a real minimal minimalist look and you like letting your viewers have a relaxing time looking at your work and um i think things that are real symmetrical and um easy or or easy on the eye easy on the mind so so sometimes minimal art can be very um more relaxing for the for the viewer but i'm just going to create a few trees zhuzhing like that this is what i call zhuzhing it's a very um very technical term and so you can see i'm gonna that's with this sort of this sort of mop brush it's actually more of a blending brush um, it's a number 10 but I'm going to show you. So that's one way to do it if you don't want to be really super technical. But you could. So here's my tip. Do you see how the end of this these brushes? This is what happens. Let me see if I can show this on here. See, this is what happens when on a to a flat brush. These are ones that I use for paint parties, and of course, you know, not everybody paints all the time and they don't know how to take care of brushes and it's it's totally fine 
but this is what a flat brush, what you want your flat brush edge to look like. You want it to be a nice, clean, flat edge so you can use it to create lines and that kind of thing. Um, but they're still useful when they get to this point. Um, they're not totally trash. This one, I'm not going to use this wide. Well, actually, I'll go in with the wide one first and show you. But this is, I'm going to actually go over these trees with more of a, um, uniform, um, let's see, what can we call this? This is going to be more of a geometric shape tree than a zhuzhd. This is a little bit more of a precise line finish, what we're going to get with this with the edge of our brush. And I'm going to show you the difference here. If you can, you might be able to see that. But that's just another way. So here we have zhuzhd and we have sort of uniform straight. And for this particular, so you could zhuzh, right? And then you could come back over it with the uniform and then you have a nice shadow. Your zhuzhing has created a shadow and now you can, um, build on that and leave some, you could start, um, we've, we've done these trees before where you actually start with an entire black background first and you do the trees in black first and then you build up to your lighter colors. It's a great way to build depth. And now I'm going to show you with one more brush. This is um, another flat brush that has seen better days. But you can, with a brush that is, has a lot of edge like that, you could really start to create some texture and actually do something more like a little feather tree. Like this, this brush just automatically is doing the work for me. I'm not doing a ton of um, technique. Um, just the, naturally the brush edge is working for me and, and creating sort of a little tree effect, like a Bob Ross style, happy little tree, right? And so now we can go, hey, how's the focus on that for you guys? So now I think I need to watch where I put my hand because it's trying to focus on my hand. So now you can go across and get, a, if you want to get a little wider with your tree. And so you can sort of see here, um, see that edge kind of gives you a little bit of, so we've got three totally different trees. And so we could keep building. We don't have to be exclusively one type of tree, but we'll just keep building these trees on our background here. And then this can be a, a plane. Um, so if we're going to have this part be our foreground, um, you know, we can kind of start to create a little bit of a ground these a little bit. And now we're definitely going full Bob Ross. We're just giving an impression of the ground and just giving grounding, grounding them. So they're not floating in the air and not being too particular about it. So the design could now become, you know, this could become our focal point or, you know, we could go all the way across and we could build trees all the way down, making a forest. The possibilities are truly endless. So what I'm going to do with this particular one is I'm, I'm creating this for a background for our new design of the month. And it would also be a great background for our Oh Dear that's in our holiday bundle. And I can link those below for you. So you can check those out because you can, you can access those digital tools that we put out for you to create with. But I'm going to keep going across and 
in my mind, I sort of have a vision of, um, and see how I'm not going, this time I'm kind of almost going behind that tree because I like the way it's picking up the darker color and I'm actually able to just go make a background tree. Normally I would build the background forward, but here you can see I can just easily slip a tree in there and then I can come back and do another one that's going to be more in the foreground. And I could have them keep coming down on an angle. I could try to keep it super straight. Um, the possibilities are truly endless. And this is where I like to point out that it's so important when you're learning a technique. And I try to tell people this in our live classes that you know, when you're learning a technique or you're watching someone when you're doing a paint party or maybe you teach paint parties, um, I always encourage people to pay attention to what's happening on your canvas. You know, you have the tools and the design and your and the learning tutorial, whatever you're using is great, but it really should just be your point of departure and you should be honoring what's happening on your canvas and not trying to just exactly duplicate what you see being demonstrated. And cause I've done it both ways. So ask me how I know that. <laughs> I think that I always have more success if I, you know, honor the, um, what's happening on my canvas and not try to, if I try to exactly duplicate what's going on in front of me, I, I, it never turns out as well. So that's been my experience. Maybe you can tell me in the comments what you prefer, what works best for you. I would love to know, but I'm just going to go all the way across here and I'll show you what it looks like real quick. And then I hope this Monday mix up Monday has been a fun little demo. And you can tell me if you like making happy little trees and if you want to um, share some of yours in the comments. If you're, if you're watching on Facebook, you can, you can actually, I think, post pictures of some of your trees in the comments. I would love to see them. And I'm almost done here. I'm just going to kind of go up the edge and I hope you can see that very well. And so I really just have a very, it, in the end, I just have a very faded. Oh, that's terrible. Let's try to turn this up here. My, um, this thing, my, my, what the heck is this thing called? The thing that holds my camera, the tripod, whatever, um, is a little challenged. I broke it. <laughs> I stretched it when it further than it wanted to be stretched. So I'm going to actually try to get pan across this so you can sort of see. It's just a suggestion of trees. Okay, so next I'm going to just show you real quick before we say so long for the day. I want to share really quick with you just adding a little touch of metallic into our trees. It's just going to give them a little shimmer. And I'm going to start with some silver. And I'm actually going to scoop some of this onto my plate here because I don't want to contaminate my... Oh, hey, come here. I need to be there. So I'm just going to start out with a little silver. And just kind of start to add a little bit of that in, in places. I don't necessarily want it to cover, but you can do it however you want. So I'm just, it's really going to just be something that catches the light more than part of the design. I just like to add a little shimmer. It's just me and you don't have to do it on the entire tree. It can just be, you can do it to one side as if, you know, maybe the moon is up high and catching some of this on 
in the moonlight, catching a little bit of snow, glistening snow in the moonlight. Maybe, maybe you'll skip your more background trees and just do some of the foreground. But I just, I have some of this amazing silver. I love the deco art metallics. The, um, this, this one, it's the, it comes in the jar. And I really do love when they actually start to dry out a little bit and I can build some texture with them. Cause y'all may know by now, if you, if you're new here, you may not know, but if you're, if you've been around, you know, I'm a texture junkie. I love to build some texture. So I would love to hear from you. I would love to know if you're going to be doing any holiday creating. Do you make your gifts? Do you, um, do you host a creative celebration? Because we have an amazing tool for you with our holiday creative bundle. And I've included a sort of a hosting guide a little party checklist, if you will, my, my party checklist for hosting a creative event. Let me see if this pearl, oh yeah, look at that. So this, I would almost keep this pearl, it's this one here. Oh, I dearly love this paint. This is, I have been through a couple tubs of this, <laughs> um, mainly because I teach classes and I share my supplies. But this is going to be a beautiful little snowy addition, glistening. And I love doing more abstract stuff like this. You guys can let me know if that is you as well. Because I, I really like to do things that are more abstract that I can just play and have fun and build texture. And I'm not trying to create a real realistic representation of trees. Cause I mean, why not just have fun? So I would love to see your trees. If you make some, I hope this inspires you to make some and I'm going to show you a couple more things before we go. If that's okay. I wanted to share, this is one of our postcards designs the poinsettia um, that's in the bundle here's one of the renditions of that i'm working on next week together we'll put together an oh dear with a template for the oh dear and then um i want to share these are these are some of the cards that i mounted on some card stock and these are some one of the other items that you can make with a holiday bundle. Well, try not to drop them. But there's just a few. Up, oh, I lost my Nemi lost a pom pom. But um, it's just a few little things that you can do together as a family. My family, we're gonna try. We're gonna do them over. Make some over Thanksgiving together while my sister and her. Um, family are here with us celebrating over Thanksgiving. We're going to spend some time doing some Christmas creating because I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, Christmas creating, come on. So I hope you guys will do that as well. And if our holiday creative digital, it's a digital kit, um, you'll get templates and videos of me teaching several designs and things that you can make with your people. So you can make these designs with your family and friends over the holidays when y'all get together. You could plan a special event. You can also just have a little private sesh and just make a bunch of gifts this year. I think handmade gifts are probably my favorite thing to receive. And I do love making them. So I just think, you know, they're more special and fun to share. So we have our Nomi and our Campy Christmas, the Oh Dear and Poinsettia all included in there. You'll have endless possibilities. I feel like the designs are pretty timeless, so you could probably use them year after year. I hope you'll give them a try. So I hope this has been a fun little demo for you, and I hope that you will 
join me next Monday because I'll be back. Um, we're going to start, we're going to do a couple components and then we're going to dive right into ornaments. So we'll be actually making a few other ornament elements that you can also incorporate into the holiday bundle that we have available as a kit. So we're going to add more possibilities. We're going to keep building those skills, building those techniques and process experiences so that you can take them into all of your future projects. So I'll see you next Wednesday, right here, same time. No, not Wednesday. So I'll see you next Monday here, same time on Facebook and YouTube. And I hope you'll subscribe and join me live sometime. Um, if you respond to these events, I believe you'll get a notification of when I'm going live so you can join me then. So like, comment, subscribe, please share this. If you know someone else who likes to do some Christmas creating, um, give it a share and the links are below to get all the goodies. I'll see you next week.